If you accidentally clicked on this video, accidentally hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. If you're not accident prone, stick around for awesome fishing tips and expert advice. Welcome to Head First Fishing. I'm Captain Joe Rains, and I am here to give you the spiciest fishing tips I possibly can. This is where I transfer all my years of knowledge of fishing to you, the Head First Fishing YouTube viewer. Before we get started, I want to thank the sponsors for our channel, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters, and also the Pike Consulting Group, all great companies. They support us. They help make this possible. So thank you very much to them. Check them out. If you want to go fishing, the tackle stores have everything you need. If you got a business in construction or manufacturing, call Mitchell at Pike Group. They'll make sure your workers are safe and your business is OSHA compliant. Next, I'm going to introduce you to an employee that I've hired, a new guy that I've brought on to Head First Fishing. He's gonna be operating different camera angles. He's gonna be bringing up maps. He's gonna bring up video clips. Introducing Francois the Beta. I've done a lot of research on this guy and he has a great background. I spent a lot of money on his background check and he's gonna do a great job working the cameras, the computers. Thank you very much for coming on board, Francois. Happy to have you here. Bonjour. I am Francois. I am Southeast French Canadian. I am an independent contractor, AKA 1099. Francois may even be able to give us a few fishing tips of his own, considering he is a fish. Now let's get into today's subject, the buffet conveyor belt of fishing spots. This is the gold mine that you've been looking for. I guarantee you don't want to skip this video. I'm gonna give you crucial intel on places that are gonna hold tons of fish, spots you need to go out and look for that are really gonna just blow your mind. Today, we're gonna to focus on talking about points, inlets, and cuts for inshore fishing. These are areas that predator fish are known to stage up and feed. Areas like this are places that many different species of fish and animals have to pass through in order to get from one area to another general area. There can even be mini passes in smaller areas that are a little less obvious. Virtually every predator that swims in the water will use one of these areas at some point to set up on their prey. Since the beginning of time, predators of all kinds, whether on land or in the sea, use funnels and choke points to get the advantage on their desired prey. They set up in these places because their prey items habitually travel there and are often forced to travel there. Predator fish like redfish, snook, speckled trout, cobia, flounder, they all use these pinch point areas to trap their prey. They literally use some of these areas as a buffet conveyor belt of food. When the tide gets right, these fish will nose into the current in the right spot and just wait for the food to come to them. These choke points and funnels and cuts, they often are associated with an acceleration of the current. There's a buildup of current into a smaller area or a pass, and it has to exit at a higher rate of speed. There's a lot of water moving, and it's coming through a short area, so it creates a draw for a lot of fish to congregate there. When the water's moving faster, this often stimulates fish to move faster. It often stimulates them to move from one place to another. High tidal current is gonna move around prey items like mullet, herring, sardines, pinfish, silver perch, crabs, mud minnows, all kinds of prey items are gonna be moving in a high current area. That's why it definitely pays to be a predator fish in the right spot. When they get into a pinch point or a fuddle zone where there's a lot of water moving out and it may be the only area to enter and exit in a broader area, that's gonna be a place where a predator is gonna set up and wait for the meal to show up. Let's look at a couple good examples of pinch points, cuts, and funnels that I have experienced to be very good for fishing. Francois, cue the map. Bubble 07 on the job. Let's take a look at another awesome fishing spot. So this is an area that I have fished many times, I've had many charters in here, and I've absolutely crushed it. This is a spot I can depend on under the right circumstances to produce for me. So I'll come in here on the high water and I'll fish up in this island here, fish right up close to these roots, right around here, around this island, and I'll be pulling redfish and snook out of them. After the tide starts moving back out again, 
I'm going to show up right here and start live bait chumming. This is going to be where a lot of fish are sitting. I've come back here time after time and it consistently holds fish. The current's flowing out. A lot of bait fish are coming out this way and the snook and redfish are just waiting all up in here to get their dinner. So I'm chumming and you can cast out a live bait and you can count one, two, three. Before you can get to five, there's a fish on it. I kid you not. It's crazy in here sometimes. So this is the kind of area that I want to take customers to because it just totally blows their mind, the amount of fish and the amount of action they're having. And this spot has gotten me many five-star reviews. Francois, next spot. Okay, boss. Here's another great spot that I've fished many times, and I have the map adjusted the way it is for obvious reasons. But this little backwater back here, a lot of fish hang out back in here. They go way back in there. When that water starts falling, again, a lot of them post up right here on this shoreline right here, right on this cut, out here on the flat right here. When the water starts pouring out of here, I'm here ready to strike. This little funnel right here collects the predators, and you can sit there and chum and catch fish after fish after fish after fish. you got to find spots like these, my friends. you got to do your homework. Once you find spots like this, your whole life, your whole fishing life will change. A door in your mind will open and all of a sudden you're going to start finding dozens of spots like these. This is another either one-stop shop or day saver spot. If I'm somewhere else and I'm having a tough day, this is a spot I'll run back over to and it's always holding some sort of fish. It's, it's never completely devoid of life. It's never... A, a strikeout. So this little backwater right here, again, has a lot of food back in here. A lot of fish push up in there. And when it flows out, those snook and redfish are chewing, chewing, chewing. There's also some big Jack Creval back here as well. So if you want something that zips a lot of line, the Jack Creval is it. All right, Francois, thanks very much. We can move on now. That looks like a great spot. <laughs> All right, one more spot for you here. Great looking spot. This has got a nice point right here. Little island cluster there, great mangroves. Really narrow little passage right here. So any fish back in here, if they wanna get outside, they gotta come right through this cut right here and guess what's gonna be waiting for them? The predators, the snook, the reds, the jacks, the trout, the flounder, all that stuff is gonna be sitting right here ready to strike. So I fished this area before and it was absolutely phenomenal on that outgoing tide. So I like using these choke points to fish on the outgoing tide. One way I might approach this is I might come around the island or I might come up this side and cast into this little trough right here that's been made by the current. Cast up in here, cast a surface lure, cast a twitch bait, a miradine, a soft plastic, a paddle tail, and fish right across this little ditch that's been created from that current that's always coming in and out of here. That would be a good way to approach it. And as you get closer in here, you want to be careful because there's going to be a lot of fish sitting in here. You don't want to blow them out. So you want to make a long cast if you can, or if you're over here, make a long cast and try to get your lure or your bait maybe to the other side of this little trough in here because there's going to be a lot of fish sitting in this zone. I see all the fishes. If you're looking for some of the best fishing in your area, use these examples I've given you to look around where you live to find some of these funnels, some of these drainages, pinch points, inlets, cuts. All these things are going to attract fish. There's something like that in your area. And I promise you, if you put in the time, you narrow it down, you're going to find some of the best fishing you've ever had. What do you think, Francois? Did I do a good job on this video? These tips are awesome. I hope the information in this video has pointed you in the right direction to find some of the best fishing where you live. Definitely smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and share with someone you think might need the information. Every time someone subscribes, I get an extra nugget. Give me nuggets. And now it's time for this video's expert advice. Long before entering a no wake zone, be sure to take lots of melatonin and NyQuil. With practice, you can pass out right before you cross the line. <sighs>
If you have OSHA compliance questions or concerns, Pike Group's got you covered.